Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom coming to you live from the basement of the Seattle apartment. And uh, I got uh, we. I have a show, you know. I do a show, a stream, a live stream, which is a show. It's called the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. Three to five Eastern weekdays, every weekday. And uh, we banter and talk about all things hockey, make predictions, talk about free agents, and that's what we're going to do today. I already did one. We, uh, we're going down the list of free agents, and on the show, it's interactive, totally interactive. So uh, you can put in your play as to the, where you think a player should go or want to go or what have you. Anyways, we did it. I'm going to kind of do it by memory. I should have wrote it all down, but it's okay. I'm going to do it by memory. I'm pretty sure I got it. We have a place for every free agent that they're going to go. So the general managers, they don't even have to work anymore. They just watch the show and go, oh, we're getting that guy? Perfect. <laughs> That's it. So we got it all figured out there, general managers in the NHL. You don't need to worry about it. It's all done. You can go have it. You can enjoy an extra month in uh, Barbados or Europe or wherever you GM got kind of people like to go. Uh, okay, so in the background here, you see Mr. Grubauer, who is going to be a free agent as well. Very interesting. We'll be talking about him. That's why I got him in the background. Good looking dude. Upper Vesna. I think Colorado will, well, we'll just go. Fine. Let's find out about it. Going to talk about it like this. Anyways, don't be afraid to subscribe and hit the bell and get this fine programming every single day. Right? Right. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I don't know. Okay. Let's get my ugly mug out of here and we'll go over to the free agent stuff now. Free agents are here. Okay. Pull it over here. Last one we did was Dougie Hamilton, which is up there. So if you want to see the last one where we put Dougie Hamilton, where he went and all that, just go subscribe. It's a video before this one. Go check it out and it'll uh you can tell you can tell me, tell me in the comment section what you think here too. Who where do you think everybody should go? So there's a lot of interesting people. We're going to do about 10, maybe 11 and uh, in this group. And then we'll go in the next group and on and on and on like that. Travis Zajac. Now, Travis Zajac made $5.7 million. He won't be making that again, boys and girls. No, no, he won't. <laughs> there's there's very, little doubt, very little likelihood that Travis Zajac is going to make $7 million or $5 million. He'll be making a heck of a lot less. Although he did have 20 points in 46 games. It'll be, I don't think it'll be that low. Like, I don't think he's going to be just signing for a million. I think, we think he'll likely sign back with the Islanders, but he might price himself out of there. Bill T, one of the guys that are regular on there, it's hard to keep track of all the people on there, but Bill T's a regular. He had a really interesting idea that he would go to the Edmonton Oilers. And I wouldn't mind that, although he's going to be 37. He's a little ripe. He's a little ripe. He could be on the decline, but he certainly would be better than Kyle Turris, for sure. So, yeah, Edmonton Oilers seems like a pretty good... I think there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be interested in a third-line center that, uh, you know, possibly, especially if he wins a cup this year, would have a cup on his resume. Um, so, but the Edmonton Oilers seem like a pretty good play. Besides that, um, the Washington Capitals, if they can't sign Eller, um, could get a little cheaper third line center that maybe could be, you know, somebody like that. Tell me who else you think he may go to. Mark Stahl, <laughs> getting close to the end of his career, he's been a warrior his whole career, did play fairly well in Detroit. Our thinking was that uh, everything I've heard is he really likes Detroit and he he doesn't want to move his family again. But he certainly won't be getting five point seven million dollars. That's for sure. There's 
Here's one where he'll likely take a million from here on out, or maybe a million and a half. And uh, if he wants to sign with Detroit and he figures he's 34, maybe he's got three more years. He's not worried about a cup, apparently. Go with Detroit. If not, maybe he goes back to Carolina and does and with his bro. Right? Uh, also, we'll see where the other stall may go. Maybe they'll decide to be together. I know they're pretty tight. So um, they probably will work on a deal where they can be together somewhere, if not in Detroit. At least it's still family oriented. I know the stalls are very, very, very family oriented. So whatever he decides will be to do with his family first. Gabriel Landeskog. Um, I, I can't see Colorado not re-signing him here. Um, he was making five, though. Um, his numbers, look at, he had a point a game. Now, I don't know if he ever gets a point a game not playing with McKinnon and Ranton, and that's the thing. Um, that's really big, and I think that will play in here. I think if he signs, he'll probably be in the seven, six and a half, seven million mark. But if he decides for whatever reason he wants to go for the big coin, there's probably a play a team out there that'll pay him eight million a year. I wouldn't doubt it. Who? Oh, the lineup would be enormous. There would be so many teams in on Landeskog if he's available. Uh, L.A. Kings, we've talked about them a lot, have said that they're no longer rebuilding. Um, just getting Detroit is right on the cusp of starting to be relevant. They, they to to get a leader like that would be fantastic. Uh, maybe Hop maybe Hopkins takes off somewhere. The Edmonton Oilers goes there. I mean, really, you, I think you could just go down the list of the teams out there in the NHL that might have some cap space at all. Minnesota, Boston, uh, <laughs> just just pick any team, really. Who doesn't want a Landeskog? If we have not seen anything in the NHL, if we've seen some, um, if this NHL season doesn't do it for you or convince you that you need leaders and defensively responsible warriors like Landeskog, I don't know what. Just Toronto, Toronto may decide to dump somebody and get a guy like Landeskog. You know that would be huge for that organization. Just go down the list. Seriously, everybody would want Landeskog. Nick Foligno, we came up with going back to Minnesota, uh, going up, going back to Minnesota, going to Minnesota to play with his brother. That was our first one. Um, again, long list. Not at five and a half million, probably about three, three and a half million, maybe four. He's, it's his, that type of leadership is so valuable. I don't know. Somebody might even pay five for it, honestly. It's, it's just that valuable if you look for t I look at teams right now Carolina could use a Felino um that would be huge for the Carolina Hurricanes like they're they almost look like they're one Felino away from winning a cup well also a much better goal Danny, but we'll get into that some other time no like Nadelkovich becoming better not that Nadelkovich is a bad goaltender um Arizona you want to build a team around a guy like Felino um, Nashville, like it's just on and on. Like there isn't, I don't think there's a team out there. If you can think of a team out there that wouldn't want a Felino, the only one maybe is like the Washington Capitals. But again, if they don't, if they find a place for Eller, they could take a guy like Felino. Um, there, I don't think there's too many teams out there, even with out cap space, that would not make up cap space somehow to get a Felino. That's how valuable that his kind of game is. Alex Goligoski, very underrated defenseman for the Arizona Coyotes. Probably not going to Arizona at 36. I would guess he'd be looking to get a cup out there somewhere. He tried to get, maybe, um, I believe he played for Dallas, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he could go back to Dallas. That makes sense. Um, especially if they can't sign um, Alexiak, if that doesn't work out, uh, this would be a cheaper version. Uh, not as tough as Alexiak, but very strong defensively. He played very well for a 36-year-old in Arizona last year. Picked up 22 points. 
If he was making five, he won't be making that. You can probably get him at two and a half million, three million at this stage of his career. So uh, we, uh, somebody, a few guys in the chat said the Islanders, and that makes sense too. Uh, that would be an Islanders pickup for sure. Um, maybe they walk away from a guy like Green and bring in a Goligoski if they have the cap room to do it. It's just Goligoski is that type, an Islanders type of player. Very unassuming. Doesn't really put up a lot of points, but can move the puck very well. As a testament to his 22 points in 56 games, it's not that bad. And you can get him on the cheap. Like, I would be all over this if I was a lot of teams. This is one of the, this list of players here are, uh, is a, a, a list that a, a lot of teams, New York Rangers, um, could fill in their roster a bit. Their defense is still a little light as they rebuild on their rebuilding plan. Goligoski would be perfect for them to help the young guys uh, increase and uh, become better. So, um, Jaden Schwartz, I got to think he's, uh, they love him in St. Louis. Let's put it this way. If St. Louis does not re-sign Jaden Schwartz, you can pretty much assume that this is going to be a serious rebuild now for uh, and, and, I mean, they may kind of be going that way. They got Krug and Falk, though. It looks like it's not going to be a rebuild. It's going to be a try to be a retool. And Schwartz has been like their spiritual leader leader and uh, heart of their organization for a very long time. Of course, you could say the same for Peter Angelo, and that didn't seem to bother them. So depends on how much he's asking for. One thing St. Louis does is they have a stern, what we're going to pay somebody, and if you don't like it, We'll move on and we'll add more pieces. So it's possible. If he does go somewhere, it's been everywhere. L.A., 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 L.A. L.A. loves this guy. They need wingers. They need guys like him. Uh, but I think there'll be more people out there that'll be interested in a Jaden Schwartz. Or more teams out there. Even like the Ottawa Senators look fantastic in the second half. I don't think they want to do a rebuild uh, anymore much. Like They want it to be quick as possible because Ottawa doesn't have huge amounts of money. They need to be competitive. Their, two, their players don't show up, or their players. Their fans don't show up when they're not winning. It's just a fact. Same with Vancouver. Who could be looking at a Jaden Schwartz as well? Uh, I could see Vancouver. I, there's a lot of teams that would be in on it, but I don't think anybody would have as much money as the LA, LA Kings to throw at him. And it would be a great opportunity for him. So we picked LA. Tatar is very interesting. He had a so-so season. He was, you know, 30 points. It's kind of what he always does. He's like a 40 to 50 point, maybe 60 if you're lucky kind of player. Um, somebody's going to overpay for him that, that wants, that needs scoring almost assuredly. Um, or somebody, he maybe he goes somewhere where they, they need to fill the roster and get to the cap floor like Arizona. That's what it feels like to me, a team like Arizona. If he's just going for the money, if he's worried about going for a cup, he's probably going to have to take less somewhere uh, to be able to, to do that. And off the top of my head, I'm not sure who would be interested, to tell you the honest truth. I think for the money he might be able to get, it, it, it really depends. If he wants to go in at three and a half, three and a half to four million, uh, we had teams for days. Oh, going back to Detroit, mm, I'm not sure if they were very happy with Tatar when they traded him. Uh, I mean, Vegas did, didn't really like him all that much. They're, he's been weird. He's kind of gone everywhere. It feels to me like Arizona is the place for him, where he just settles out. Fills in a role until a young player comes, signs for about the same thing as the Donoff signed for, and does something like that. That's what it feels like to me. So tell me what you think about what Tatar does. Uh, Host has retired. Uh, Tyler Bozak, there was talk back to Toronto. I got he's not gonna he was making five million dollars a year. He did have 17 points. Sadly, this feels like something the Oilers would do. The Oilers really need a third-line center. And they seem to not like third-line centers that play physical for whatever reason. Uh, and I don't like that, but that's the case. 
Um, but there's a bevy of teams that would probably interest it, depending on, on the on the uh, uh, Seattle. Seattle could go for a Bozak, fairly vanilla player, wouldn't cost much, fills a roster spot. If they are just looking to kind of build a team and rebuild through the draft, you know, he it probably would be a place where he could maximize his income going to a team like Seattle. Uh, by the way, a lot of these players would be on could be on Seattle's list as well to fill in roster spots if they decide to do it that way. Um, Tatar as well could go to Seattle. That would be an interesting one. Um, but I think we had Bozak going to Toronto at a reduced rate. So tell me what you would think. Nick Jalmerson, I thought the Boston Bruins was a great spot for him. Um, they need a little more leadership here. He's certainly not going to be making $5 million. He's probably going to be going in the million and a half range. Um, although it was kind of, it would have been kind of odd to do this and then not, you know, and not have signed Chara before. So, but I think this playoffs helps them realize that they have some uh, young players there that really aren't ready. So he can fill a role at a million a year. And Jalmerson can do that anywhere. Another one, the Islanders would be a good example here. I mentioned the Rangers, uh, New Jersey Devils. But I, I think Jalmerson for sure, he already had a taste of a cup in Chicago. Maybe back to Chicago. There's a good example, good, good one for uh, for uh, back to Chicago, have a, have a little homecoming. They got some room there. They got some young guys that are still not ready. So it's a possibility. I mean, are they cup worthy? Maybe not. Um, another one you could think of is Tampa Bay is probably going to have to lose a guy like Chernak or something like that. And they they probably don't want to put all their their uh, – dollars or all their uh, eggs into one basket there with uh, foot Cal foot so um, bringing in a guy like Jalmerson would give foot a little more time to to work his way into the lineup and you wouldn't have to give him like maybe two years tops um, and he still plays well I I thought he was playing well in Arizona like I thought he, I thought he did very well so Anyways, that's my full 42. That's what we got today. Tell me what you think about these fine picks. Hit the subscribe and bell. Come to my show, 3 to 5 Eastern weekdays. It's called the NHL Pearlism Show. If you subscribe, I'll send you a reminder in the morning, and you can go on there. And go check out the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Crushing it there. Hitting 25,000 hits now. We're getting more and more and more. It's a great network. It's growing into all sports. You're going to have cappers and uh, not cappers. Uh, you're going to have YouTubers, uh, bloggers, writers, everybody for every single team in all four of the major sports and uh, a live feed going through it at the same time. It's going to be amazing. We're just growing. Love to have you. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Bye.